Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev and in this video what I want to do is just do an end of year visit to two frameworks that I've been following that I think are pretty cool. Um, they're not quite as mainstream in the Python world as Django is. They're not quite as mainstream in the JavaScript world as Express is. Um, but they're two frameworks that I follow for a while and I think are pretty cool. And it's been a while since I've had a chance to play with them. So I thought I would uh, just quickly just kind of spin up uh, a new project, see what it looks like to spin up a new project, uh, maybe create like a page and an API route and kind of go from there. So first we'll do Masonite and then I will do full uh, TS, uh, which is more in the TypeScript JavaScript world uh, in the second half of the video. I figured it's a good way to wrap up the year. Okay, always trying to, you know, play with as much code as possible every year. And I resolved that I'll be doing that again next year. Okay, so if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment. But um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the full, I mean the Masonite. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the Masonite documentation. And here we go. Okay, first, well, actually, first thing I should do is probably set up a Python virtual environment. That would probably be a good idea. Okay, whenever you're doing any Python project. So I'm going to set that up real quick. So you guys know the deal. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a git ignore just to make sure I ignore my virtual environment. Git ignore. And we're going to add a um, slash or slash v and v folder there. So that way it just ignores um, the virtual environment. Then I'll create the virtual environment. So python dash m, use the virtual environment module. We'll just call it v and v. And there it is. And then we'll activate it. So that's going to be uh, source dot slash v e n v slash bin slash activate to act run that activate script to activate our virtual environment. Awesome. Okay, let's let's see what they want us to install to um, run Masonite. So sudo uh, so apt install. Let's install Python. Okay, but well how about starting a new project? Here we go. Pip install Masonite. So let's do that. <coughs> pip install masonite okay let that do that and then to create a new project once that's installed we'll just do a project start uh, well I'm gonna want it to create it in a separate folder so we'll do that okay so what I'm gonna do is pip I mean project start masonite 2022 Okay, it's crafting the application, then it wants us to CD into the application, Mason I-22, and do project install. Okay, and it's so it's installed everything we need. Okay, so there's my whole setup. Wonderful. Okay, and then if we want to run the server, it's just Python craft serve. Okay, so from there I'll just do Python craft serve. Okay, and the server is running on 40,000. So let's actually move this over to the side so that way we can kind of see these side by side. Okay. And... I want to go to localhost 8000. Cool, that works. Next thing let's do, let's, let's figure out how to just render like a page. So. Let me just examine, if I remember right, like here we have our routes. So if I look at that, web.py, okay, here is a list of routes. So we have an array of routes, pretty straightforward, route.get. Okay, I see what they did. That's different than last time. I remember before you had to import like get, post, each of these functions separately. Now they're all inside of this route object. That's nice. So you don't have to keep updating your imports all the time. Okay, and then again, basically here's the path. And if you're familiar with like Laravel or... Ruby on Rails, which is what this framework takes a lot of inspiration from. The idea is it's for it to be that Laravel or Rails in the Python world. Um, essentially, this is going to point to the name of the controller, which is going to be a class, probably in the app folder somewhere. And this will be the function that it runs. And the idea is that that, that function should determine what should be the response when that route is requested. Okay, so yeah, so pretty straightforward. Now we go to app. We should see a controllers folder. There's the controllers folder, and there's the welcome controller, and you can kind of see like the basic setup here. Okay, 
and basically what it's doing is going to view dot render. So generally, when you hear see a render function, that means it's going to render like an HTML view. Okay, so it's going to render a view called welcome, which probably is going to be in a folder called well, in this case, it's called templates. And yeah, so let's see, there's a welcome.html in that templates folder. Okay, so let's, let's just test this out. So theoretically, from reading, the, just kind of like reading between the lines, I could read the documentation. I have read the documentation in the past. Um, but following the patterns, just based on the code, I should be able to create a file called cheese.html. Okay, and I'm pretty sure by default, this uses Jinja. Yep, that uses Jinja templating. So just so we know. Okay, and then I should be able to go to my controller, create a new controller create a new function on the controller, def cheese. Okay, it's a class function, so it's always gonna take that. Then we define the view. Okay, so it's using dependency injection. That's when you type a argument, and essentially that becomes, it injects an instance of the thing. So basically I never, we import this view thing here, and by typing that argument as view, it's gonna pass the view to, a, a, it's gonna create one instance and then basically inject that in every use. So that way I don't have to keep creating more than one instance or lose track of how many instances I create. It kind of does that for you behind the scenes. That's called dependency injection. It's a pretty cool pattern. Um, and cool. All I want to do is we'll first just we'll create a variable. So we'll call it cheese equals Gouda. And then we're going to do is return view.render. Okay, yep, and see, I can pass in what template I want to render and the dictionary of data. Okay, so it's pretty much like any render function in any framework. Okay, so I'll pass in, I want to render that cheese.html file, and then we pass in a dictionary with any data we want to pass in, which I want to pass in cheese, which is going to equal cheese. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to that cheese.html. Okay, and we're just going to do an h1 double curlies, and we should be able to inject this cheese variable in there. So I should get an h1 of Gouda. Okay, so let's try this out. Oh, actually I have to attach that to a route. So I have to go back to my router. So that's gonna be in that route section. And now that we have this new route, I'll put a comma here. Okay, I'm just, again, this is an array of routes. So I'm gonna just copy that. Okay, and it's gonna be welcome controller, and this is gonna be for slash cheese. And it's gonna run that cheese function from the welcome controller because I didn't make another controller. So now this should work. Slash cheese. And there you go. See the H1 with Gouda. Okay. So pretty easy um, to get up and running. Okay. Now how about making an API route? Okay. So what if I want to make an API route that like sends me back some JSON data? Okay. So let's try that out. Okay. Get rid of that extra comma. Oh, I see. This wasn't closed there. Okay. Now, first, let's head over to. Well, actually, I'm gonna have to read the doc documentation for this one. If I remember right, there is like a JSON function for returning JSON data, but it has been a while. Okay. Provider. I oh, won't worry about that right now. I just want to know what the function is. Models, users. So fun and good. Show me an example of the piece that I need. Route.get. Okay. That's just showing you like for like a lot of other aspects that you need to kind of take care of. Uh, response, I think here's what I want to look for. Uh, redirecting. I'm going to send a JSON response. Response.header. Response.redirect. Actually, let me just take a look at that controller for a second. So let's head over to that welcome controller. And it's from port from views. Okay. Uh, from Masonite, from Masonite, 
dot response import response okay and then I then again we can use a uh, dependency injection response response so we just define the response argument as a type and I'm gonna oh well I don't want to do I want to do that in a new function so def send json self then I was to response response Okay, and let's see what methods this response object has. Response dot cookie jar dot data. Does it have a JSON function? Yes, we do. That's probably what I want. Okay, response dot JSON. Okay. So I'm going to assume that we just want to pass a dictionary here. So we're just going to say message it worked. Okay, now what is it complaining about? I need a colon right here. And then I need to return this. And let's try that out. Okay, so that would be to re return uh, JSON data. And now let me head over to the routes. And let's add another route. And this time will be send JSON. And it's going to be slash JSON. Okay. Oh, I see that the server stopped running. So let's run that again. Okay. So I'm going to go back over here. Let's go to slash JSON. And it worked. Okay. So basically that's how you would do like a JSON API. Again, there are other things you want to do because like out of the box is going to have like CR CSRF protection and things like that. So if you go ahead over here to the API development, it's going to show you how to set up a lot of things that make it even easier to do APIs here. Okay, so again, check out the documentation. The purpose of this video isn't to you know go super in depth there, um, but the documentation actually reads pretty well, so you should be able to figure it out pretty quickly. Okay, so that's Masonite. Again, think of that as like the Rails Laravel of um, Python. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at full TS. So I'm gonna stop this, shut off the server. Okay, let's close up this folder. A CD back into the main folder. Now that we've seen that, let's head over to the full website. Full. Okay. And basically what's going to happen here is we're going to install the CLI globally. So we'll do that. npm install dash g at full slash CLI. I'm going to need to do a sudo on that. Even though I wrote suad, so you know, spelling sudo put in my password. Okay, let that install, and then we just use this command here to create the, the next application. So I'm gonna say full create app full 2022. Okay, so it's creating all the files. Okay, and again, generally like a, with a lot of these frameworks, you're going to get a lot of similarities. Again, they're all trying to do is just take what you could do with like a minimalist framework. So like if it was Ruby, it would be Sinatra. If it's JavaScript, that would be Express. If it was Python, that'd be something like Flask. Those are minimalist frameworks that kind of just give you the basics, but you have to build out everything yourself. These batteries included frameworks, they kind of try to give you a lot of the stuff built out and patterns to follow. So that way you can just focus on the parts that are unique to your app instead of focusing on like writing a lot of boilerplate code. I personally like writing the boilerplate code, code uh, which is why I oftentimes default to an Express or Flask. Um, but I do enjoy seeing the patterns and the ideas in all these kinds of frameworks because all of them try to use different techniques, again, like dependency injection, um, decorators, uh, all in really interesting ways to sort of simplify the process. Um, but, you know, it does give them a little bit of a learning curve up front because since they're not a simple thing, it's a, it's, they give you a lot of tools. You have to kind of like see how, the, learn how the tools fit together. But then once you kind of figure that out, you can be pretty productive with that framework. And that's why some people like they're literally the whole career is like a framework. Like they, they are, they, they develop things in Django. They develop things in Rails and that's like all they do. 
Okay, so that's installing still. So I'm gonna pause for a moment, let that finish. Okay, that literally finished as I hit the pause button, so um, that wasn't necessary. Okay, so let's see what it says. It says creating files, installing dependency. Problem occurred during installation. Dependencies try installing manually by running through the commands. So let's do that. sudo full 2022. And let's do an npm install. Okay. And that looks like it all went well. Cool. Let's first take a look at the folder structure. Again, you're going to see similar stories. So again, this is a JavaScript project, so generally everything's always in source. But if we take a look in the app folder, we see controllers. Okay, so those should play generally the same roles we're used to. So again, a class with functions. But when I look at this, I see that we define the method. Instead of having a separate router, okay, we have these we have these um, uh, decorators that allow us to define the routes on our controllers. Okay, so again, those are decorators. So the idea is that technically, this looks like a little weird annotation, which is what they call them in, in Java. Um, but what you're really doing is you're taking this function definition and passing it to a function that's defined in the library and wrapping it. And it's probably like that wrapper that defines, you know, this is this is a function for get request to that URL. And that's something you can do in TypeScript, not in plain JavaScript. So again, this is a very TypeScript first framework. Okay, cool. Let's just explore also here. Like this is a this is just another controller, or here's the API controller for writing API routes. Well actually that's a test. Let's see, API controller. Where is the main controller? Okay, I guess that by default it, it's built to make APIs. Okay, and yeah. Okay. So let's see here. It's been much actually longer since I've used full than I've been since I've used Masonite, so let's see here. I just want to write a route. So let's see here where in the documentation would be the best time, best place to do that common validation file storage rest api do, 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 do. okay well let's just take a look at that controller again uh do, 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 do. actually let's start with the index ts so we can kind of see like the whole layout so if i take a look at this there's importing a bunch of stuff but i see that here's like the main function uh we're initializing some stuff that doesn't matter here we're creating the app which is taking something from the app controller so, so i'm assuming that's this controller right here so here's our main controller. Okay, and then see we have a subcontroller called the API controller. Okay, because I guess here the controllers and routers are pretty much going to be sort of the same thing. Um, cool. Okay, so I guess all the routes in the API controller all belong to creating API routes. And then if I go back to that API controller, okay, basically we can we just send the response by whatever we pass inside this HTTP response function. So let me try this. Let's try writing another one. We'll say at get slash cheese. Actually, we'll call this one JSON, kind of like we did for the last one. Okay, but again, the decorator's got to decorate a function. So we're going to say uh, the, the the function name doesn't particularly matter. Uh, we'll call this cheese, or we'll call it JSON. Actually, don't call it JSON. That, that very likely collide with something. Get JSON or send JSON. Okay, context. So we define the context here again. We're using dependency injection. So actually, I don't think we're using dependency injection in this case. We're just typing it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, then we're going to return a new HTTP response object. HTTP response okay, which is going to be a 200 error level. Okay. Um, where have I seen this pattern recently? Yeah, like I think in Django where they also have like a function for every type of response. I have mixed feelings about that that pattern. I see like it makes it easy to you have to think about the numbers. Um, but then you have to memorize a bunch of functions. Okay. So then we just want to send some JSON data. So I'm just going to send over an object. And just like before, I'm going to say message. But I can't sending an object, not a dictionary, so I don't have to put quotations on the keys because this is JavaScript now. Uh, message, it works. Okay, and something it doesn't like about that. So let's see where I messed up. Strings must use single quotes. Okay. That's interesting. It must be like a something specified in the TypeScript config. That just prefers single quotes in the linter. That's quite opinionated. Um, okay. So 
we have that. Now let's see how we run the server. So I'm going to head over to the package.json and look at the commands. Okay, and that looks like would be the command to me. So npm run dev. Okay, and it's basically building. What it does, it basically compiles all the TypeScript and then runs the file. Okay, let me just read all this output. Make sure I could not locate the binding file. Okay, that looks like it has to do with more with the, the database, so I'm not going to worry about that. It's like, oh, I couldn't find the database because it was never generated because we didn't run any migrations. But we should be running on, oh, let's see here. Port 3000, it looks like. Oh, let's try that out. Localhost 3000, no. I think this is the React example, right? Create app. Oh, I guess it didn't successfully compile. That's the issue. Um, why didn't it successfully compile again? Running child process not build index. Could not locate the bindings file. Okay, so I got it working. Um, basically, I what I did is that the error related a lot to SQLite. Okay, so there must have been something weird about when I tried to install SQLite or maybe a version change. I'm not quite sure what the issue was with SQLite, um, but didn't want to really do all that troubleshooting right now. So basically what I did is I commented out the two lines that have to initialize the database since we're not using the database features of the framework right now. So in case you run into this issue, those are the two lines. You can comment those out and everything's running fine for me. If it works fine for you, then that's probably what it should be doing. There's something wrong in my environment. Um, but yes, so I commented that out. It's running on localhost 3001. So let's try that out. If I go to 3001, I'm going to see the main full page. Now, again, if I go to slash API, slash, I think it was slash JSON, huh, we get our message back. Okay, so again, that's, 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 that's it for sending a basic uh, JSON file. Okay. Now, let's try to send just like a normal... Uh, page okay uh, do, 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 do. we want to create a new controller okay so what I'm going to do is I'm pretty sure we can use the CLI for that so that way we can just kind of connect everything for me instead of me creating a custom class and all that stuff so I'm going to head over to the CLI look at the commands and see what the options are okay npm run dev npm run build full upgrade build the source code from the start from the server uh, start server from build files, upgrade all local. Okay, so yeah, I guess I have to write a controller. So let's go look up the controller documentation. Here we go. Okay. Ah, there is a command to generate a controller right there. Full generate controller, we'll just call it. I'll just use that name, my controller. Okay, and see what that does is that it's going to automatically generate this my controller file. Now that it update the main controller, no, so I will have to come in here and wire this. So we'll say controller, and then again single quotes because the linter slash cheese. I don't know why that's all I can think of right now. And then we will import the my controller controller. Okay, and then again that's automatically gonna import that for us. Okay, perfect. Okay, so there here we see like just a plain vanilla controller. Okay. Now what I wanna do is I wanna render a template. Okay. So now in order to do that, um, let me refer to the docs here, there's a section for front end. Uh, front end, where did I see it earlier? Yeah, here, front end. And here's server side rendering. I mean, they also talk about how you can like use a React project in here and all that stuff. So that's very easy to do with Fold. That's actually pretty nice. Um, that kind of configures that for you. Okay. But 
let's take a look at how we would write our routes. Okay, so we're going to use this render function. So first thing I'm going to do is import that render function. So again, it's probably going to be the same pattern as we've seen where, yep, I pass in a template and then pass in a object or key value pairs for the template to render. Okay, so we're going to return the result of render. Okay, and here you got to pass render. Now, what is this relative to? Is there a folder called templates? App controllers. Okay. Turn. Trying to see what the context file is. Okay, I'm going to assume that's going to run it in the context of the root. So when we say when in the documents it says dot slash templates, it's not relative to where this file is, this controller's file is, but relative to the to the root of the compiled project. So I'm going to assume that what I want to do is create a file here called templates. That's a file. New folder. Oh, and actually it says it right there. It assumes it's a templates directory in your root. So easy peasy. See, reading the docs. <laughs> reading the docs makes everything easier. So I'm going to just put here new file, cheese.html. Okay. So then in that case, I could just be like dot slash uh, templates slash cheese.html. Okay. Cool. And then we'll give it some data, cheese. Gouda. Okay. And again, it's complaining about the whole like single quote thing. Okay. Okay, it's complaining that I never use this, so I'll just remove it for now. Okay. Oh, still complaining about single quotes. Oh, because my my formatter changed everything to double quotes because you know nothing like conflicting formatting standards that's wonderful thank you okay and then explaining about the double quotes over here okay is there like a prettier file in here here's the eslint can i change that setting for the functions quotes error single Yeah, so I could probably just comment out this line here or just remove this line and it can stop complaining about my double quotes. Let's find out. So if I remove that, will you let me do double quotes again? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, much better. So now I can just let my formatter do its job. Okay. So now let's go to that HTML file. Okay, and then we'll just try again in H1. And if by default, I'm pretty sure this is like, it looks like it's using handlebars where I can do the double, double quotes. So geez. Okay. Although I think you can configure pretty much any other um, templating library. It walks you through how to do that in the documentation. So if you want to use EJS, you want to use Pug, you want to use literally you name it, it'll uh, be the, it, you can, you can do so. You just have to have a express compatible function, so express compatible render function, um, and it'll work. So here we go. Uh, cheese. Uh, so this should be working, but let me just restart my server. Okay, and now I should be able to go to slash cheese. So file directory as templates cheese.html. But it's right. There. Is it in my source folder? Let's check. It is in my source folder. Okay, so in that case, I should probably do it relative to where this controller is then. So let's see here. Uh, that file is inside controllers, so it should be like dot dot slash dot dot slash. Okay, let's see if I do it that way. Does that fix it? No such file as dot dot slash. 
Hmm. I'm restarting the server, so it's rebuilding. Okay, but let me change it back to the original. Let me take a look at the build output. So is there like an example folder with the build output? Okay, here's the build output so I can see what happens. App, controllers, entities. So here's my controllers. So it creates a controller in there. But it's not creating a templates folder. The templates aren't being picked up. So I wonder if there's something I need to configure for that. Do, 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 do. Go into my index.ts. No, and actually, I want to take a look at my ts to config.json. Source. Ah, so, so it's looking for all the TypeScript files. So, what I need to do is in the build is add the templates folder. So what I need to do is actually copy this templates folder for a second and paste that in here in the build. Because again, it's reading the code from the build. Um, but if you take a look at the TS settings, it's only compiling your TypeScript file. So my HTML file isn't, isn't being uh, added. Um, so let's do that. And we'll experiment with that in a second. OK, but now if I do have that there, if I refresh, Well, actually, let me rebuild this. Although I think it just deleted it. Uh, yeah, because it removed it and then rebuilt it. So what I want to do is include that templates folder. OK, so what I'm going to do is go back to that tsconfig.json. And I think I could just do this source slash templates. OK, and if I do that, let's see what happens. Now, in this case, does it copy over the templates folder? App, scripts. I see the mistake I made. It wants me to put the templates folder in the root folder, but I think I put it in source by accident. So here, here is in source, but it should be in the root. So that's a my bad. So let me go put that in the root. Okay, so that should be in the same at the same level as source. And now, if we try this again, and it works, except that didn't interpolate. So let me just double check here. What the syntax is by default. Yeah, she should be. Well, that's what twig, what's the default? Yeah, so that should work. This is, need, this is space required. Let's find out. HTML. Go into my template. So let's put the chi space. And then let's re-render this. Yep. OK, so the space is required. But again, that's if you're using the default uh, that's built in there. I would probably always configure it to be something like EJS, uh, maybe Liquid. But um, yeah. So that's that's full TS. So you can see like there's a, you know, you, you want to be familiar with TypeScript and TS config settings. Although let me get removed this because we don't need this anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully that gives you a tour of Full. But the idea is you can do whatever you want with either framework, and they have a lot of stuff built in. So like Full has a built-in stuff for like databases, setting up all sorts of types of GraphQL and REST APIs. Um, you know, again, like any of these frameworks, it's going to take a little time to kind of learn it up front, and probably some, as you said, I me mean, just doing some initial 
you know tinkering around and troubleshooting. But once you kind of once you learn how everything connects, it's it, you can be a very powerful tool to do a lot of stuff and do a lot of stuff very quickly. So if you're a JavaScript person, Vault.js is probably very worth taking a look into. If you're a Python person, Masonite is probably very fun thing to look into because both of them are going to give you really powerful patterns um, for building applications very productively. And since they're both the, on the newer side, um, they embrace a lot of the newer features of both languages um, and popular patterns. Um, while older frameworks might be stuck, um, having to you know do things sort of in some older ways, um, you get you get to take advantage of some of the new sweetness in these in these uh, uh, frameworks. So uh, check them out. My name is Alex Merced. Have a great day and enjoy.